Let me introduce myself. My name's John Harbaugh. I teach trumpet here at Central Washington University, and uh, I have some of my students here. We're going to present a, a master class uh, just on some basic physics on how the instrument works, uh, giving you some experiments that you can do at home and uh, see if that is how uh, the thing actually does work. I'd like to thank uh, Denny Edelbrock for the opportunity to uh, bring this information to you and hope it helps you in your, in your development as a trumpet player and, and certainly as a student of the instrument. So, uh, what makes this sound? Anybody? Could it be you moving air through the horn? So, he says air. Let's see what happens. I'm going to put a piece of paper over this. I'll notice that there's no hole in the paper, so no air can go through here. And let's see what happens. I still have a sound. So what's, what's making the sound? Anybody know? Got an idea? Energizing the air molecules. Yeah, OK. So Stephen said energizing the air molecules. So if we look at this tube, which is really all a trumpet is, I mean, it's uh, a bunch of tubes that have been soldered together and have valves in it. Somebody charged you a lot of money for it and said, thank you very much. But all you're doing is really blowing through a tube. So inside this tube, he said, are air molecules. Well, he is correct, and we're going to see what happens when we energize air molecules, but we're going to use a different tube. Let's see if, uh, let's see if we can get this thing going, if Steve wants to come up here. So we know from a physicist, you can hold on that for a second. We know from a physicist standpoint that the trumpet they call it a known system, meaning that they know how the instrument works, they know what makes it work, and actually this information has been around for close to 100 years now. If you go talk to physicists uh, and, and ask about this stuff that we're going to talk about today, oh yeah, that's old news, it's no big deal. Uh, for a lot of trumpet players, it is new news, and uh, so we're going to see if that may help you become a better trumpet player. Um, if you understand how the system works, you can actually play or be in phase with the design properties of the system rather than trying to have to fight it all the time. So what I'm going to do is I've got a torch here. We've got a glass tube. Uh, you don't need a glass tube at home. Any tube uh, will work. Be careful, it gets hot. Uh, you don't want to burn yourself. But you can actually see uh, what happens here when we energize those air molecules. I'm going to light this torch. And uh, then we'll, we'll go from there. So give me just a second here. For you pyros, if you like uh, playing with flame, this is a, another way to do it. OK, here we go. All right. So we'll bring the lights down. And then I'll take that so I don't burn you. Okay. All right, so you can see the flame. It's quite long. Let's see what happens when we put it in the tube. We're going to energize the air molecules in this tube. And we have a what now? We got a sound. Was anything buzzing or vibrating? There's nothing going on here, except we have energized those air molecules, OK? Now, watch the flame and tell me what happens to the flame. What's it doing? What happened? Yeah, the flame's going berserk. It's getting short. It's really active, OK? So the last question is, we do have a sound. We know that the flame is interacting with something. What happens first, the sound or the flame going berserk? What happened first, Casey? Sound happened first, OK? So you just witnessed, could you take that, Steve? What, uh, the July 1973 Scientific American article states by Arthur Bernard, uh, if I can quote Bernard, he says, a trumpet produces musical tones when the vibrations of the player's lips interact with the standing waves in the instrument. These waves are generated when acoustic energy is sent back by the instrument's bell. So we know then that the lips move sympathetic to the standing wave or we don't have to make the lips go. I was doing a clinic, and one of the uh, 
people in the audience ask me, well, if that's how this thing works, how do you get a sound? What makes the lips go? And I said, I don't really know, but I'm going to go ask uh, one of the physics professors here on campus. So he explained it this way to me. He took a flat surface, and he put a piece of paper over the top of it, and he did this little simple experiment. Now what happened? The paper lifted, okay? Or what we did actually is create a low pressure, and that brought the paper up. Okay, if you notice, the paper is, has no tension in it. It's very relaxed, okay? And he said, this is exactly what happens when you blow across relaxed lips, that they start to move as a result of that low pressure, but it happens in a millisecond, and at the same time, which we watch with the tube, that standing wave's coming back, and that's what energizes those lips. But I'm not doing this to make them go. They are simply going as a result of the physical activity inside that little mouthpiece or big mouthpiece, whatever you have. So that's, a, that's another concept uh, that, again, I got from a physicist. It's, it's how the crazy thing works, and you can do, you can address playing the trumpet in many, many different ways. This is one concept that comes from, from physics, and I hope it becomes a, a tool that you can use in your uh, development as a player. Right? Okay. There was another article that was uh, written. Uh, this is in the ITG Journal, volume 25, number 4, June of 2001, uh, written again by another physicist, but his, uh, his uh, purpose was playing with buzzing, fact or without buzzing, fact or fiction, and the physicist with Thomas More. Uh, and what he did, in, in short, was uh, took and created a uh, synthetic copy of a face, basically cut a hole in it, put a trumpet on one side and a, an air compressor on the other, and just to see if he could get a sound out of that. And lo and behold, he does. What the, the purpose was to see if the lips actually had to be an integral part of making that sound. And, and, and then creating a, just a general sound, they, are, they move sympathetic to that standing wave. So if we understand that, then we know that this is how this system works. Now this is made of what? Metal. And this is made of what? So who's going to win? The metal will always win. So you can go about playing this at a diff with a different approach. The problem is, is if you're fighting the horn, you're going to have some problems. Now I'm going to steal a, <clears throat> I'm going to steal a uh, exercise that one of my former teachers, Professor William Adam from Indiana, used with us. If you guys could stand up, and <clears throat> this is a very simple uh, idea, but it gets into. It gets into some of the things that we want to talk about, uh, just to how the horn works. So if you take your fingers and point them at me like this, okay, and say this with me. My fingers are coming together. 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 And for some of you, your fingers came all the way together. Some of you, it, didn't, it doesn't matter. But I never said wiggle your arms or your wrist. You did that kinesthetically. Or we would say you put a desired result in the forefront of your mind, and as a result of that thought, the body, which is a slave to the mind, produces that end result. Okay? Now, we're going to do this a different way this time. But what I'd like you to do is push, and I'll talk for a minute. Now, this is an isometric response to the same desired end result. Okay? So are these fingers flexible or rigid? Rigid. Rigid. Okay. And can you do this all day? No. So we have a problem there. And what's happening at the end of the fingers? Blood's going out and they're turning white, yeah? Don't push too long or your fingers will get numb, okay? And you can release them. And now we have to have recovery time, okay? So when I create a response isometrically, what I have, in, in fact, uh, destroyed as a trumpet player, I've destroyed my endurance, my flexibility is greatly reduced, and then also oh, I understand that I have to have a lot of recovery time. But I can do this how long? 
Well, I, if I had to, I can do it considerably longer than I do if I have to push them together, okay? So you guys can sit down, thank you. So what we're after then is again playing the trumpet with a kinesthetic response. Well, how do I get that? And what activates a kinesthetic response for me? Remember that the conscious mind can hold approximately 2,500 thoughts in a minute. The subconscious, they've yet to measure, but it's in the billions. So the most efficient way for me to play as a trumpet player is to be able to use a subconscious or an intuitive way of playing rather than a active having to think about mechanics and make the thing go. Now I can play that way, but it, it is not as efficient. So Robbie, you play baseball. So when you're standing at bat, if you're thinking about how you're gonna swing or you're thinking about keeping your eye on the ball, which is the most effective way of hitting the baseball? Keeping your eye on the ball. <clears throat> because you're out of the way of telling your body what to do and you're learning to trust it to hit the ball. Now, do you hit every ball? No. no, but through the process of learning to keep your eye on the ball, you do hit the ball. Or we go back and we talk about riding the bicycle, okay? How'd you learn how to ride the bike? You had to fall, right? There's no other way to learn except to crash, okay? And if you think about it, you only have about this much maybe of that much of the tire at one point in time on the pavement or on the surface. So the physical activity to keep you on the road and upright and going forward is quite, quite extensive. And if you had to tell your back muscles what to do and your leg muscles what to do and do it at the exact right time and keep yourself there, could you do that? Well, if you could, it'd be awful difficult, but you don't, but you don't think that way. So now, maybe you haven't ridden the bike for six months, but you get up and ride it. Why? How are you able to do that? It's like riding a bike. <laughs> okay, but you've learned through years that you can trust yourself to ride that bicycle, or you can trust the slave or the servo mechanism to allow you to ride the bike, okay? That didn't happen overnight. Trumpet playing and developing these concepts with trumpet playing doesn't happen overnight. It takes many, many, many years of development, hard work, patience, and time on your part to become the best trumpet player that you can become. But we, our goal is that we want to play from a kinesthetic response and not an isometric response when we work on the trumpet. Okay.